Okay, Alex. It's not me, it's the dog. <laughs> we should be live out there. I'm live out. on YouTube. We are live on YouTube. So good evening and welcome to uh, Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Let's hope Richard puts on more than a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> when he comes oh. back, oh, we've been happy. We, that was, yeah, you gotta. Y'all only wish out there that you could be in the pre part, the pre show party, and sometimes the after show party. You gotta, because um, we have a heck of a time. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of laughs, and uh, it, it, it's 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 something else. Trust me, it's something else. So, and some of this stuff can't go live. If it would, no. I wouldn't have any sponsors. They'd all. <laughs> They wouldn't. We should invite a viewer every now and then to the pre-show. Yeah, they wouldn't want me as sponsors. So. Oh. oh, Chris, I can just see. Okay, now get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would go over very well. Uh, we'll go up high and then sit down low. Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> hey, we like your briefs. I tell you what, I got chills and they are multiplying. Uh, <laughs> I said uh, all 38 people that's watching the show likes your briefs. Yes. Sorry, pal. When you flip the camera over, Russ turned it on. I sank my truck in my BVDs. Okay. Brenda over there was having hot flashes. She was going, Whoosh. I ain't seen that much skin in years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up with the camera even more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oy vey, oy vey. Um, always something different. <laughs> yes, always something different. I didn't mean to blind you. <laughs> um, I'm trying to make sure that we are. We're You're live on Twitch. Facebook is running. Live on YouTube. Okay. Facebook is running. Be sure. Great. Yep. And it's it is. five degrees in Odessa, Texas. Yes. Uh, Path 1961 is out there. Leonard Davis, Aussie man. Um, Michelle is there. Uh, Luann Pierce, uh, Rick St. Louis. Uh, Kimbo's out there. Yep. James Parker. Um, all out there. Right. Ken McCrory. Michelle Marcou, I think I said him already, but that's okay. I'll see him again. And JJ. Dave Hart. Yeah, Dave Hart is over on Twitch. Good to see you over there on Twitch, Dave. And oh, we are also marching, uh, watching uh, Facebook. I have it on the chat here, too. So, um, But good. Good to have all y'all out there. I appreciate y'all being here. I can just lock it over on to... Um, YouTube and leave it over there since the chat's working. We know it's coming in from Twitch and everything. But good, good evening and welcome to uh, Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Um, sorry I missed the uh, last week. It was July 4th and plus uh, we had some other things that was going on too. And one of the things is, is uh, in the last five weeks, I am self self-quarantined at home for COVID, but I don't have COVID. Uh, within the last five weeks or so, I've had two cases of gout. Uh, the first case, they gave me uh, steroids and, and some pain medication. And uh, they gave me also a, a prescription of endomethiacin or whatever. What did you say it was, Chris? Endomycin. Endomycin, okay. Endomycin and said if it comes back to take this. Well, it reared its ugly head this past Monday. And so I took that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. By Wednesday, it ain't even touched it. So I'm back at the doctor. And uh, so they end up having to give me more steroids. Now, the problem with, it's not a fact of a problem that I can't have steroids for a long period of time if I need it. The problem is, is that steroids can, on some people, affect their immune system. They can suppress their immune system. And with this COVID thing going around, that's the last thing I need. So basically, I'm home quarantined because 
since I'm on these steroids, he doesn't want me out in public. And, uh, you know, I'm like Ron White. I can't be out in public. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I'm, I'm having to stay at home. I'm having to be a good boy and not go anywhere. My wife, we had a birthday party to go to today, and my wife ended, ended up going, and I wasn't able to go. So, Just think of yeah. all the things you can avoid. <laughs> yeah. Well, we mostly, since this COVID thing broke out in March, we mostly, her and I stay home anyway. A lot of our groceries you order uh, from Sam's and it yep. comes in, uh, and we order now Publix has a uh, uh, delivery service. So we order from there. So, we, I mean, I go out occasionally. I've been to Home Depot a few times uh, and Ace Hardware in Mulberry a few times, but I mostly stay at home. So it's not, yeah, not yeah, it's not any really big deal. You know, it's just that there's a few things I need that, uh, uh, plumbing wise, cause we're redoing our bathroom and I'm redoing the shower right now that I might have to go get, or I might have to give them a, uh, my wife a list and let her go get them. So we'll see how that works, but, uh, good to have all y'all out there. I appreciate y'all out there very, very, very much before we go any, uh, any further. First, I want to talk about my sponsors and they are Devobel technologies for web design development hosting. Visit Devobel.com. FastCap, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to FastCap.com. Uh, Rockler, 60 years in woodworking. Create with confidence. Visit Rockler.com. Bearwood Supply Company, your best choice for hard to find woodworking supplies. Go to Bearwood.com. Clingspore, the sanding specialist. Woodworkingshop.com. Seiko, the scroll saw specialist. Seiko.com. And Scroll NATO. Scroll NATO. Uh, desk collection for your scroll saw and you can find them on Amazon and the next thing I want to show off is give me one second here is my good friend Al and his wife uh, what, what's her name again? Michelle. <laughs> Michelle I don't know why I can't remember Michelle LaBelle or whatever you know I can't remember that but anyway so. look what I got Hey, he he graduated up the ranks in Starfleet. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. And he also, I, I thank you and your wife. So tell her I thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. It's, very much. Yeah, I gotta say it's rocking and rolling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, these are the extenders that can go on the uh, flap for the back of your head. That helps so you don't have to have it pulling on your ear if you don't want. I'll. Uh, printed me a couple of those, 3D printed them, and thank you very much. I appreciate that too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wear them, wear them well, leather. Huh? Wear them well and wear them often. Yes, yes, I will. I we have, uh, I've been wearing. Yes, we uh, have. You must have masks on. Yeah, uh, Polk County hasn't went that direction yet, but Hillsborough County, the county next to us, you can't go out in uh, any. If you're caught, they'll actually a hundred fifty dollar fine. If you don't have a mask on, Hunter Davis wants you to put it back on. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, love you. Put it back on, Leonard. Thank you. I appreciate. Gotta it. love the fur hands. Yeah, uh, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does Richard have a uh, a Facebook police theme going there? Yeah, yeah he's got Facebook. Yeah. Police. You haven't ever seen this thing on Facebook police? Yeah. Did he just yeah. freeze up? Yeah, I think he froze. Yeah, there he goes, man. He's not froze. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and let y'all introduce yourselves, Brenda. I'm Brenda G. Of Brenda G's Designs. You find me almost anywhere on the internet under Brenda G's Designs. I have a YouTube channel. I do comedy and I do some crafting, and I do a live stream on Thursday night with Matt Haas called Mind Equals Blown. So, if you're not doing anything on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, join us. I usually do a giveaway on the show. And we'd be glad to have you. Great, Paul. Paul Corliss from Paul's Messy Workshop. Da -da. Hey. Um, <laughs> uh, on oh, YouTube, cool. on Instagram, and sometimes on dot com. Wow, Aussie and here, man. And here on Saturday night. Aussie man says it's possible jail time here if you disobey the COVID laws. Wow. It's five hundred dollar fine here. It's fines here, Aussie man. Yeah. All right, Al, since you're talking, go ahead. Um <clears throat> Forte Kilroy seven nine seven six three. You can look up me up anywhere. Kilroy seven nine seven six three. Great to be here. Hope everybody is safe. Please stay well. Uh, Jim Bashir's. Uh, Jim Bashir's driveway workshop and um, 
that's about all I'm on. <laughs> a little bit of YouTube, and that's about it. No pain meds, Jim? What's that? Sorry. No pain meds? Uh, yeah. Yeah, see? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's every the- time I cut the grass, it's worth two tramadols. <laughs> but I am looking forward. I got a nice list of uh, shop, whatever, you know. And, cool and, and, tips and, and the grass has never been so short. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that grass, man. You could putt on it. <laughs> uh, uh, Dixon. Hi, everybody. I'm Dixon Hoffman. You can find me at hoffmansignsanddecals.com. And I'm hoping to pick up a bunch of tool tips tonight. Cool. We ho- I hope people have some. Uh, Mr. Richard. Yo, man. I'm Danny Zuko from Grease Lightning. <laughs> Okay. Uh, my name's Richard. I'll go ahead and get out of this mess. Uh, <laughs> bad karma Richard here tonight. Uh, a lot of things have been going on. Glad to be here. So uh, take it away. Yeah, we're going to talk about his uh, bad karma Richard thing here in a little bit. Adventures in algae. Yes. <laughs> no, I Richard, guess. put the That's glasses me. back on, Richard. Put them back on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. Hey, yeah, and Chris here from the old Cranky Workshop. Day number one hundred something of working from home. I've lost track now. So, um, hope everybody's well and healthy, and your families are doing well. Find me on Facebook and YouTube. Hopefully, the new YouTube project out soon. I just got to sit down and get it edited. So, great. That's all I got. Great. Um, and a plus, uh, not only have I had gout in, uh, twice in the last five weeks, which is very rare. Usually, I get it in probably the beginning of July, which is that's what it is right now. And then not until August, but it's reared its ugly head real quick this year. For He's going reason. for the record this year. Yeah. Um, and we know what it is. You know, a lot of people say diet and stuff like that, but it only happens to me in the summertime. And what it is, is we're pretty well sure because my diet hasn't changed in years. And as far as what I eat, uh, but we're pretty sure that what happens is I'm a sweater. I sweat a lot, and especially when it's hot. And I'm sweating. And, uh, and I, these are like 32 ounces. And I drink uh, 30, uh, three, or four or five of these a day in, of water. And I'm still not drinking enough, apparently, because I'm getting the gout. So it's, But we're pretty sure that that's what's happening because I don't get it during the wintertime. You know, I don't get it. Did, just raised your volume a lot. Yeah. Whatever I just did, yeah, yep. your volume, your volume just, just went sky high. Well, I haven't done anything. There, now it went back down. down. It did go back down. It's probably because I put the glass between me and the mic, and it interfered with the. TV. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I would because it's a directional microphone. So if I put something in between it, it probably made it go stupid for a few minutes or a few seconds. Anyway, so, but yeah, uh, and then we've had uh, Nancy's nephew, our nephew. Uh, uh, has been in the hospital. He's not, uh, he, he's doing good now. When he went in, he wasn't doing very good and it was not COVID related at all. Uh, but he, uh, he went in the hospital and uh, I think he may be getting out this weekend, the last I heard. So, say a little prayer for him. His name's Jeff, real good guy. He's a young man, he's like 35, 37 years old, somewhere in that area. And, uh, but he hasn't been doing good at all. But hopefully, Hopefully he'll, because he's the breadwinner and he has a wife and a couple little kids. So uh, say a little prayer for him, Jeff. We hope you're doing better, buddy. I know you, he probably doesn't watch the show, but I hope you're doing better. Amen. Um, so we're doing going to do tool tips tonight. Uh, do we start off with that or we'd go to Richard? Oh, you got to go to Richard. Yeah, yeah. we need a few, we need a few laughs. Yeah, okay. something tells me there's a good story coming our way. All right. <laughs> so, my good friend here, Mr. Richard, uh, it took a little vacation this past week or so, and uh, took his. He had a pontoon boat, and he took it out and had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> This so, fun is fun. 
I think you need to start off with the part about having to come in with a trolling motor first. <clears throat> okay. Oh, well, and, and, well, the the, and the name of the boat, too, by the way. Let's start okay. with the name of the boat. The last time we talked, uh, we were talking about fishing on the flats, and you guys had warned me that if I'm in the grass area, and a lot of places, if your motor is in the water, whether or not it's running or not, if it's in the water, you can get a ticket. So I said, well, I'm gonna get me a trolling motor. So long story short, I got a trolling motor. I couldn't afford the uh, the Kodas uh, and all these high-end ones. So I found what's called a Haswing, or it could be pronounced Haswing, H-A-S-W-I-N-G. It was $520, they sent me the wrong one. Uh, it was a freshwater slash salt water, but you had to rinse it, but uh, anyway, that was a $790 motor. And I said, okay, well, it's their mistake. It's my game. So I mounted the Haswing on there. And so long story short, we get the boat in the water. Next day we go out and we're doing some fishing. And then the motor caught fire. <laughs> Not the Haswing. The engine on the back, the 40 horsepower Mercury, the erective fire caught fire. And when I smelled the smoke, and I mean, it was billowing out from underneath the cowl of the engine hood, I lifted it up and it flashed like a barbecue grill that hasn't quite lit yet. And then finally it lights, it went, Whoa. we had a brand new fire extinguisher. I used it. <laughs> now, who's the one so that then, told you to get the new fire extinguisher? Everything was, everything is new on that boat. I know, but Except, wasn't it, you said in your thing that your wife had told you you, get, you had to have a new fire extinguisher or something like that. Yes, she did. She ordered one. I said, well, we've got a white one. I said, it's three years old. I think it's still good. And she said, no, put this one on. Well, guess what? Point. In the heat of in the, heat of the moment, um, <laughs> I didn't ask for the white one. I said, give me that red one. <laughs> so we uh, kicked on the uh, trolling motor. And I, I'm thinking we were about a mile and a half, maybe two miles out. And that thing was flawless. So after making it back to port and getting off and going upstairs and making me a drink, Russell knows about having a drink. Um, no, I, I made a little video. Now, Al, have you pulled up my video off of my Facebook page? You're Al, muted, Al. You're muted, muted. Al. <laughs> yes. Are they moving in and out? I saw it, yes. Pull it up and let everyone see it because the name of the boat is called the Tintanic. And I was thinking of Celine Dion's song, and I'm, I'm not a singer. On YouTube, I don't. It was Facebook, right? Facebook. Well, it's on YouTube as well, I think. Well, I think I think I can find it better on uh, on Facebook. So it's just something about the situation. I came up with a little couple of lyrics and a little plan. So if you'll show that, I think everyone's going to get a crack out of this. Here's here's what I've got, but it's but it's uh, oh yeah 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 here we go here we go okay there there's the there's the uh, <clears throat> the boat you haven't uh, you're not you have a screen shared there's the boat huh. oh, the yeah. tin the tin tannic look at that <laughs> now oh what's that. That looks like dinner. Yeah. yeah, but but the thing is, the thing is, is is here's, there, there's something wrong here. Here's oh. the, the the truck. Wow. Here's the boat. The Titanic didn't sink. The truck did. Yeah. <laughs> there's the there it is. That's an interesting mooring you have there. <laughs> anyway, that's it. What what else did you want me to to, to look at? Play the video uh, before that where I'm singing the song from Titanic or from Titanic. <laughs> Titanic now. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. There it's about go. the Haswing motor. Yeah. 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 A little earlier, you were posing for a picture. Here we just go. Like the, just like the oh, Titanic. There it is. <laughs> is I've got it. it. This is it right here. You got it? I got it okay. right there. But the problem is you can't hear it. Here you are. Now don't go too far. 
without a has wing motor. <laughs> <North Island. laughs> Here we go. What the? What the? Oh! Don't! Don't! Hedge! <laughs> Order yours today on Amazon.com. Now, see, I should get paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> you should get paid for that. You really should. <laughs> So well, anyway, everything was going great. Once I fixed the motor, we went fishing the next two days. And that Wednesday afternoon, we went over to the public boat ramp to load up. And my wife, Kathy, was uh, in the cab. And uh, I'm driving the boat up on the trailer. And she's spinning the tires. And she's coming in the water. So I used the boat and went full power, got it on the trailer, jumped the trailer uh, to where it was sitting on top of the winch, but it was enough power to go ahead and push her up. Now I had a problem. The boat was sitting on top of the winch and I couldn't drive down the road with it like that. So I thought, hmm, I'm looking down where all the algae was and since she spun the tires, I figured she cleaned off some algae so there should be a grip. <laughs> nay, nay, this is not what happened. I'm on the back of the boat after I get the truck in the water and I'm lifting it up. And as soon as I lifted it up and got it situated, Kathy's screaming. And the thing came down the ramp. I jumped in the back. The driver's door was open. I watched it just totally fill up with water. And apparently I had fractured my third toe in the process. Because I didn't know that until I was walking back to the rental house because I can't ride with the tow truck driver. So, uh, major amounts of depression set in. Long story short, uh, night before last, I went and picked up a 2018 GMC mid-sized truck. Uh, 2018, yeah, but it only has 12,000 miles on it. So, if I can get an insurance settlement and I can sell that boat, I'll have that thing down to about $14,000 and I can handle a car payment on there. But the moral to the story is, <laughs> I didn't want to go on vacation and come back with a car payment. So I'm a little mad at the uh, Pasco County because they didn't maintain it and there were no warning signs. Now, I know some people, I say, what do you need signs for? Well, apparently, yes, because I thought it was a public ramp. People were using it. I thought it was perfectly safe, excuse me, safe. And it, it's definitely a learning experience. So, yeah, a few days ago, about a week ago, I didn't want to hear any jokes. But right now, let them fly. Well, <laughs> my question would be on this new truck, this GMC that you bought, how much extra did they charge you to fit it with pontoons? <laughs> <laughs> I fell for that, Brenda. I thought you were being serious. <laughs> um, well, I, I am serious because I think you yeah, need them. Folks. That might not be a bad idea to strip the pontoon boat and make some wings out of it. When I get in the water, I just lower them down and be, uh, you call me blonde. Yeah, yeah. And your other truck, was it a uh, four-wheel drive? No, it's two wheel drive. Oof. Yeah. I don't know that that would have made a difference, though. Well, well it not. does, but the the Dodge trucks are very light in the rear end. Yeah. So, but uh, this new truck, I'll I don't want to tow anything. You know, after the boat fire and all the costs and all the time I put into that thing to make it just right, and then all this happens, I pretty much have a bad taste in my mouth on a serious note. Yeah. You may as well take up wood turning now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I still have five fingers. <laughs> and with the karma I got going on, I don't think I want to try any new tools I'm unfamiliar with just yet. However, I can watch you guys do it. How about that? <laughs> I, you know, I do know that I have to turn my ways, but uh, anyway, good golly. Man, but you guys. I Go ahead. When I saw that, I just was like, no. I thought it was I thought you were joking around at first. And I looked at the picture the second time and went like, oh my God, his truck is actually in the water. <laughs> yeah, no pun. My gut sank. I bet. It, it was awful. It was awful. You know, the adrenaline was going. The people of Hudson, Florida were absolutely outstanding people. Somebody snapped a picture. It went, a picture, it went on Facebook. There's seven people up there wanting to help. One lady from the bait shop 
I said, hey, I said, uh, you look familiar. She says, yeah, you got bait from us this morning. I said, oh, Lord. So she had a dually. She backed down. She called some of her other friends that got straps. I went out in the water. And uh, this is the horrifying part. This is where I started having nightmares. I had to climb in the cab and sit in a seat. And I just looked around, and it was just awful. Oh, man. Uh, popped the hood, swam out, because you can't walk. Well, you can't walk. And I put the strap. I had to go underwater. When the hood was up, I had to go between the bumper and the radiator, and I had to go down to the bottom, find it, because it was very murky. And then I had to uh, loop it around. And, yes, I'm a smoker, but I held my breath that long. Um, and uh, they pulled it out. And then they oh, turned they around and got another truck. They disengaged the trailer, hooked it to that other truck, and then they went down and got the boat uh, loaded up for me and parked it. Those people in Hudson, Florida, I wish they were watching right now. They were awesome. And you know what? It gave me a good feeling. I just, I, well, this isn't a Christian. But you thing. didn't, I mean, you didn't have to, I mean, you didn't have to have a tow truck pull it out. They pulled it out for you. All right. That's recovery versus tow. It's $450 for them to recover it. Wow. So yeah. I, I'm trying to get a hold of her. Her name's Michelle. Uh, I don't remember her last name, but she's at uh, Cooper's Bait in Hudson, Florida. Wow. And, that was uh, nice of them to do that. Was, oh, was, it running it, was it running when it went in the water? Yep, that's why I haven't even. I, I, so it's they hydro, took, so it's probably hydro locked. Oh yes, I would be willing to bet it is. Can't even turn the ignition right now. You can't even change gears right now. Yeah, that thing is uh, so corroded. The electrical system fried immediately. The headlights are uh, blown. Yep. Uh, I had to take the negative off the battery because the windshield wiper fluid pump kept running. Uh, there's, no. it, it's dead. It's totaled. I hate it. And you go out there right now, it doesn't look like there's a thing wrong with it. But you open the door, it smells like a dead fish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I thought you was going to say that those people was all outstanding there in, in Hudson, Florida, because they's all outstanding there on the watching shore it. watching <laughs> it go under. <laughs> going, going, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> they told me that I was the third we vehicle that week one. to go We in. got another one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's what surprised that week. I thought you said within the last couple of weeks, but they, you're the third vehicle that week. Right. And apparently there's been a lot of incidents, incident reports filed of which the attorney is trying to find. And uh, they wanted to know my name. He says, no, he says, I want I want all the incidents reports since the boat was remodeled. He says, but most specifically since January of this year. Wow. And they said, well, you're going to have to subpoena those. <laughs> because if we tell them my name, they can pull that incident report and say, oh, yeah. there was no incident report. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So it's, it's going to be a fun little next month or two. I just, you know, I want the thing out of here. And, oh, and the State Farm guy, he got mad at me when I told him, I said, I'm still taking pictures of it for the attorney. He thought I'm trying to sue State Farm. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> I don't understand. He said, well, we can't tow from your house now, not if you've got an attorney involved. I said, you know what? I said, I'll push it out on the street and you can come get it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. They wow. don't know who I am. They don't know the evil side of Dr. <laughs> Dr. Paul Bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, just real quick, uh, Jim Dockrell's out there. Uh, good to see you, Jim. Luanna Pierce. Um Aussie man still with us. Uh, I think uh, David from Portal Woodworks joined us. Yeah, he's out there. Good to see you. Good to have Mortal you. Woodworks? Yeah, Mortal. Portal. P O R T A L. Oh, I Mortal. <laughs> no, Portal. Like in Portal Potty? A Porta Potty? <laughs> David Jones. Uh, uh, the Dad Cave has joined us. Thank you. Uh, Wizard Woodwork Sean Draper has joined us. Thank you for joining. All right, I like Sean's uh icon, uh, really, really cool. What his, is his logo? His oh, icon, logo? cool, yeah, it looks really nice. The Dad Cave, I believe I said that before. The Dad Cave, but appreciate all y'all being out there. Real, uh, and Richard, before you get off at the end of the uh, toward the end of the show, I want to show you off your little building that you built too. But we're going to get into some shop okay. tips right yeah. now. It's, I've, I've gave you enough air time. Okay, if you want, <laughs> I, I've got to go here in about 20 minutes. If we don't have time, we can do it again. No, 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 I'll do it. We'll do it then. Well, let's just go ahead and do it. I'll pull them up. Um, Are you sure? Yeah. 
Am I sure? It's my show. I'll do any what thing I want. <laughs> no, we I don't, don't want to hurt your toe. You're not going to hurt me. Uh, so I've got it pulled up. So, um, so give us a little explanation about this. I'm going to start showing the pictures. Okay, it's a 12 foot wide by 24 foot uh, easy portable building. And I bought it for about $8,300 and it was uh, finished on the outside, but not the inside. And uh, my son at the time, uh, it, it, for the family's sanity, we went ahead and uh, made it into living quarters for him. And uh, as you can see in that first picture, it has a full bathroom. That door goes out onto a little bit. Okay, yeah. All right, full let's bathroom. start with this one, Russ. Full bathroom. The toilet's not installed there. That's the, the little dining area. And when you go outside, it's a 12 foot by four foot little porch. And on the inside there, it's got a loft and behind you is another loft. That's the tin uh, that I used in the bathroom. Full size shower. Uh, I put down some felt paper and then I put concrete, put the base in perfectly level, perfectly studded. Um, I did a very, very good job on my first total uh, shower install. I might have to have your help. I'm fixing to install one of these, basically. I'm getting a, a, doing a round one in the corner. Yeah, just, uh, I'm telling you, put concrete in there because, number one, even though the floors are pretty much sound, if you don't have that concrete, it will crack, and then you will have a leak, and you have to tear it all out to replace that pan. So I yeah. definitely recommend... Now, did you use uh, concrete or thin set? I used concrete and I mixed it very dry, uh, the way they do the mortar in built in showers. Right, exactly. And I put it down two inches thick and uh, skimmed it where it's two inches. And I left about four inches on the edge so that as I pushed it down and it squoze, it came out perfect. I mean, I was very lucky. But I took the uh, time to look at the, some videos on shower installs, and I read the instructions. I went to the manufacturer's page, and they were very helpful. That uh, All of this was, uh, I believe, purchased from Lowe's. Right. I was told to use ThinSet uh, on my uh, – but, I mean, but I know what you – I've built shower uh, – permanent showers in concrete before, and that's what you do. It's called dry packing. Plaster of Paris works good, too. No, that wouldn't work for this. I yeah, just where you, you put yeah. it up, you, yeah, you set it underneath the, the fiberglass pan and uh, it works perfect. Really? Yeah, you does it crack down. and pulverize? Huh? It doesn't like pulverize no, or anything. That's what I would think. No. Uh -uh. Hmm. Well, anyway, you use, but you, I know what you did. You dry packed it just like you do a shower floor in a regular house. Right. And I got uh, just cement and a little bit of white sand. Right. Just so that when it hardened, it would give it that stability. And I mean, you can jump up and down in there. No problem. Yeah. Like I said, I was told by several and the and even the manufacturer rec recommended thin set, which was what, uh, what you would use for tile floors. So. I don't see it be a problem. I would just mix it a little bit on the dry area so that it could sit higher. Right. Right. Exactly. All right. And then this is your, this uh, bathroom sink. Oh yeah, that's a little vanity sink, and uh, <laughs> that's where the plumbing one joint didn't get glued, and I found out real quick when I applied the water to it. <laughs> I got a story about that. That's a beautiful shower. I'm telling you, it uh, really worked out well, and I put in a nice, powerful fan, and I routed it upstairs. When you see the loft area where he sleeps, you'll see a knee wall that I use not only as a headrest or a, or a backboard for his bed there's some electrical right in there and then i use that to vent it to the outside and i put a very sturdy outside bath vent uh not aluminum i actually found a steel one so it's vented very well that's the uh, little office area or you could put a bed in there that's the loft area you see that knee wall to the left that goes from the floor on up to the first uh, arch of the gamble roof yep yep that has a three-way switch in it, so when he's up there, he can turn all the lights out, and then he's got some outlets. I over-outleted this shed because he has all these devices 
and uh, I didn't want them running extension cords. There's right. my little teeny tiny uh, staircase. Uh, yeah, but did did you cut the the side piece or did you did you make them? Oh, I made it. I, uh, that was my. I haven't done a staircase in so long, and I remember I had to use the Pythagorean theorem. Yes. And I got the length right, but uh, the height of them, because it was such a short uh, uh, baseline, they had to be very tall. Yes. So no, not the code, but it is a tiny house. Yeah. Yeah, they wouldn't be code. <laughs> no. That was at a foot almost. Yeah, that's pretty tall. I know it's seven inches up here. You could almost put, put some drawers in them. Yeah. There's a loft there. Yeah. Really. Now, is that ceiling insulated? I'm sorry. Is, is the ceiling, ceiling insulated? insulated? Oh yeah, I insulated with a two-inch uh, radiant barrier styrofoam, and I cut it in between the trusses because there's really no place for a uh, a, a, a soffit vent. And uh, so I put them in there, and I left uh, let's see, a three and a half, two inches, inch and a half uh, gap between the plywood decking of the uh, roof. And I put a uh, silver side up, and you would be surprised at how much ventilation does come up through there. Where the inlet's coming through is from the very, very bottom. I left a very tiny space. So it, it does have some convection going up there. And by golly, when I was putting it in, you could tell where there was a void. And uh, I put in some uh, tough stuff uh, foam and uh, some uh, air conditioning tape to seal everything up. There's the now, uh, yep. windows. From, uh, those, oh, yeah, those are the Amityville windows. They yeah. look good. And for those of you who don't know, Richard made those windows. Made those out of that uh, PVC board and cooked the boards on the grill and built a jig and and uh, I bent them to the 45 degree angles that they're the 45 degree angle curve. Wow. And uh, hey, at nighttime, I'll turn the lights on. Hmm. And uh, my neighbor was coming over the other day and I was flickering them on and off and I was opening and closing the door and he got scared. <laughs> <laughs> I told him we have a ghost named Klaus. That is awesome. That That's is right. totally awesome. Um, uh, don't, I, I mean, I know when I met you and then I talked to you about being on the, this show a few times, you said, <clears throat> well, I'm really not a woodworker. Bull crap. That's bull crap. I thank you, Russ. Yeah, I mean, I know I just, you, you know, when I think of woodworking, I think of making salad bowls and Table not leg. I mean, that right there, building those windows is a making woodworking type thing. I mean, that's it's that's just awesome, dude. That's but awesome. You need, to, you need to finish the story on that and tell them what you're doing with that building. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it is now for sale. I've got to make a proper uh, sales sheet on it because I think there's so many demented people out there that love the Amityville Horror. I'm going to sell, I'm going to try and sell it as an Amityville horror themed shed. There you go. There you go. But he, he's moved out. He's got a girlfriend. They're living in Daytona beach. I noticed there wasn't a toilet in there. Obviously was there a toilet in there before you've just taken it out? Oh no, that was just before the toilet went in. Oh, okay. Uh, we dug the trench uh, and tied into the uh, house uh, drain field. Right. Okay. And it is done to code and we ran Hot and water, hot, excuse me, hot and cold water from the garage back wall all the way out there. So there is no water heater in it, but there's plenty. It ties right into the water heater. It's just all buried underground now. No right. chance of it freezing up in the winter or anything, is there? <laughs> it's Florida. No, we don't have to worry about that in Florida. Yeah, in Florida. You ain't got to worry about it freezing up. Well, that and is. That is actually awesome. I mean, like I said, you're a very accomplished woodworker. Yes, you are. I, I love, I'm looking at the picture now that you use the, t the tin, so to speak, on the uh, ceiling. That looks fantastic. I like that. Yeah. It worked out. It's not perfect, but it worked out really well. Great, great. Hey, Richard, Richard, did you ever watch, uh, did you ever hear of living big in a tiny, a tiny house? Yeah. It's a it's a big fad where people are building tiny houses, homes like that, and living yes. in them. 
Yep. And it's going crazy all over the internet. Yeah, it is. Well, all they got to do yeah. is they got to load it onto a trailer and then they can yep. have their, their tiny Amityville house. That's yep. what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> now, how much are you selling it for? What are you asking for? Well, I started out at 35.5. Do you think that's too much or not enough? I think that's about right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's about right for, I mean, for how, how big is it? It's a, a living area is 12 by 20 with the porch is 12 by 24. That's about right because you're going to pay around 22000 for a fancy teardrop trailer. Yep. And that's yep. really big. Yours is a lot bigger. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 35 five is what we paid for our house in 1985. <laughs> the one we're living in now. You know, I don't know if it would classify as a tiny house because it's 12 feet wide. I think the maximum of RVs is eight feet wide. Am I correct? I was going to say you, yeah. most of the tiny houses I think are, well, you can get them 10 foot. Yeah. Yeah. 10 foot is usually about the max, but yeah, yeah. 12 foot, it, but it's still, it's, I think it's a tiny house, but uh, I hope you sell it. I'm, I'm, I really it's tiny do. than mine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I hope you sell it. Well, you said you might have to go, so we got. Uh, but yeah, I want to tell you, it looks sharp, and I hope, I hope you sell it because that would help. I know that would help you tremendously financially, especially with the truck thing now. So. Yeah, that would erase the uh, truck payment, and uh, I'm pretty sure that if I sell it and I get the thirty-five-five, I'll be totally out of debt. Good, very good. So, well, I got to tell you, just... my heart sank for you when I seen your truck in the water. I was like, no way, no way. So, thank you very much. It, hey, it could have been worse. Could have been the hearse. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I and I know, and he he's right. His his truck was immaculate. I've seen it. It was, I mean, it was like almost you couldn't almost like brand new. I was shocked. I'd say it was roughly just by the appearance of it. It was probably three and a half to four years old, just by the way it was. And yeah. I just put new tires on it. You think they're going to pay for that? No, no. no. But anyway, I appreciate it, Russ. That uh, means a lot to me. I appreciate all of you guys for hanging in there and uh, Brenda, keep those uh, likes going on Facebook and uh, Al, you and I'll talk soon. And anyone else wants to just chat, hit me up. You know where I'm at? You know, I started to get a hold of you. We've had between my wife's nephew with being in the hospital and then plus with my uh, gout, I was going to try to get a hold of you. And But it's kind of one of those things. Do you do you want to reach out because and talk to him about the situation or do you just wait and see if he reaches out to you? Because I know you were devastated. Well, this phone that I'm on right now, I'm still having problems with. I've got my new one in there today. Uh, so... It's funny when I started I had eighty percent and now it's down to thirteen percent. Well, video sucks up a lot too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, hopefully I get that thing uh downloaded, everything backed up tomorrow and I'll be back to normal. Everything's gonna be fine, guys. Yeah. And I appreciate you inviting me over tonight. No problem. And if you need anything, I am only a phone call away, my friend. Yeah, but you're in isolation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, under normal circumstances. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Russ. If I need you, I will definitely call. And uh, appreciate the invite tonight, okay? No problem. All right. Well, I'm going to go on in and turn this thing off. And, uh, guys, have a great day. I may, I've got about another 10 minutes, so I'll go ahead and sign on on the laptop and watch the rest of the show until i got to get back again. Yeah, All right. Good have a good you one. Guys. Good Bye, Richard. Okay? Yep. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Good day, brother. See you, Richard. Easy. See you. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. And it, yeah. and just think, I, I saw him on Facebook, and uh, when he started up, the, uh, I was a very big fan for, as a teenager, uh, or as a, not even teenager, was went from the time I was probably eight or nine years old, a uh, very big fan of watching the original Dr. Paul Bearer on uh, Channel 44, and uh, they used to do the, um, um, the thing... Um, can't even think of the show. Anyway, he was a host for scary movies and um, creature feature. Was yeah, that's what it was called here yeah. in Chicago, too. Yep, creature feature. So I was a big fan yeah, of yeah. the original. And when I seen this guy, Richard, uh, step in and start doing it again, I was like, that's just amazing and everything. I loved it. I followed him on his web page. I followed him on Facebook and everything, watching him and everything. And just out of the quirk, when I started doing the Santa thing, I uh, private messaged him and said, Hey, 
uh, I said, uh, something like, would you like to do, it was getting around Christmas time or no, it was, yeah, it was fall. I think it was September. Uh, cause we did the, uh, the Halloween thing and we did the Christmas thing. So I think it was back in September. I said, Hey, would you uh, like, um, to do a thing with Santa? Uh, you know, I would like to do one with you. And so I sent him pictures of me from the previous Christmas and how I was dressed up and everything. And he talked to, I think her name's Michelle is, um, uh, a manager or whatever. And immediately, um, responded and said, Oh man, we'd love to have you come over and do, uh, some promos and stuff with us. So that's how we met. And we've been friends ever since. And that was, I think that's been three years now. It's been like three, maybe four, but at least three years. All right. So we've only got a, I mean, we can go over. That's not no big deal, but we want to do some shop tips tonight. Cause I promise that, <clears throat> excuse me. And I am sorry we got carried away, but um, I wanted Richard on tonight really bad. Uh, you know, I wanted him to talk about that. Sometimes that's, uh, the best medicine is just to get it off your chest and talk about it. And especially he's gotten to the point now he yeah. can laugh about it. I mean, I know he was devastated in the beginning and I felt so sorry for him when I saw his truck because he kept care of that truck. He loved that truck. So uh, my heart just sank when I saw it. Well, let's get to shop tips. Um, uh, do we want to just me call you out and do it or sure. everybody? Yep. Go ahead. All right. So I'll, I'll just go down the list like we did before. Brenda, you got any? Oh, I've got a bunch. Well, do like two or three as late as it is. Okay. Well, the first one is y'all got hack saws and you got coping saws, right? Yep. Okay. If you buy new blades for these saws, instead of just flopping them in a drawer someplace and forgetting where they're at, take you some twist ties and tie the new blades to the upper. Yep. Just like that. <laughs> just like that. And that way you'll know where your new blades are when you need them. I do that already. That was gonna, right. You, you stole one of mine, Brenda. <laughs> then you got to find the hacksaw. Yeah, then you got to find the hacksaw. But yeah, <laughs> she's right. If you just wire tie them to the top, they're right there when you need them. Go ahead. Now, another tip is if you've got old refrigerators or freezers or, or stoves that you're getting rid of, you know, you're going to put them out to the curb for the big item pickup. Take the wire racks out of those. If they've got any wire racks in them, you can hook them wire racks up to the walls in your shop and you can hang stuff off of them so that you can find things. So that, that's another little tip for you. Those little wire racks, buddy, they come in handy for so many different things. They also so, come in handy for at campfires to grill on. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, they don't last long because they're such thin metal, but they, they will last a couple of seasons. Yeah. So I, I always just nailed them up there on the walls yeah. of the shop, and I could hang stuff off of them and be able to find things easy. Yep. Um, another one is if you have uh, workbenches and you don't want to be marring up your workbenches all the time with glue and, you know, when you're doing your glue ups or paints or something like that, get you a, a vinyl tablecloth. They're real cheap. You can get them at the dollar stores for practically nothing. And just throw that vinyl tablecloth over your workbench when you're doing your glue ups and stuff. And that'll keep your workbench clean. And you won't have to be up there with a the putty knife trying to scrape all the paint and glue and stuff <laughs> off of your off your workbench. Save you a bunch of time. So there's three of them for you. That's great. Great. Paul. Paul. Yep, I got, yep. I have, I save all the little desiccant things that come in in different you know like medicines and electronics and all that i save all the little dust oh. bags and then i give them to my daughter and she opens them all up and sews them in a little bag and then i throw these in with my tools oh. and it keeps them from rusting yeah. and i also stick them in with my my uh, filament for my 3d printer and it keeps the moisture down so anything that has a little decimal bag in it, I save it. And then my daughter makes these little things. Uh, for scroll saw blades, I use the, the contain, pill containers like you get at Walgreens. And what I do is I take one of the lids 
and I cut the end of it off and I tighten it onto one of the pill bottles and then I put the other one on and it'll screw on the other side. And then I put the little sticker that comes with the scroll saw blades on there. And I know what's in there and where that it came an, from. That's an awesome, that's all, well, I sh you showed that a few years ago when I first met you and I, that's awesome idea. Yep. And the, the last one I got is if anybody has a rigid oscillating spindle sander. They know that the, the knob where you change the spindle or change it to a belt sander, that thing gets on there so tight that about the only way you can get it off is with a pair of pliers. And that boogers the knob all up. So what I did is I 3D printed a knob that fits over that. And I sell these, if, if you have a 3D printer, I've got the, the, the file on Thingiverse. If you don't have a 3D printer and you want one, email me and I'll tell you how to get one. There's three. Al? All I gotta say is, well, I've got a couple more things, but be crafty, be like Paul. That's what <laughs> Be like Paul. That, that's uh, when he saw. I first saw that. I was like, "Now that's about the smartest thing I've seen." That's because I never throw anything away. Yeah, I'm like that. Go ahead, uh, Al. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, I've been working on a building. It's building day, I guess. Um, that's out west, and it's got some water damage. You can see it, I guess, right? Yep. We got see water. It. So I've been scabbing and cutting and, and replacing different pieces and stuff before I throw a roof on it. And I've been putting up siding. And uh, the, the siding, um, one tip that I've got if you do this is if you put a two by four or something at the bottom, you can actually put the siding on it, get it all aligned, put one nail in it, and then go on to the next one. And basically, yeah. you can align them all like that. I've been kind of doing them one or two at a time but I've been kind of keeping that line down here. And if it's a little bit off, you just unscrew it, you know, screw it, don't nail it on, unscrew it, push it down a little bit and, and put it back in. And that gives me, I mean, I can raise it up there, you know, and use the ladder, which is my helper and uh, to, you know, to, to get it, to get it uh, uh, tacked on there. So, so I'm going along and I had to eat something. So I threw <laughs> some chicken and some, uh, now, there's some tips. There, there's a tip for you, chicken and corn. Um, but uh, you can see how I'm kind of going down the line. Uh, and I've got a lot of a lot of wood damage I got to fix. Um, but oh, got to stop and smell the roses. Okay. Um, I, I told somebody sometimes sometimes the uh, the the thorns are in front of the rose, and then sometimes the rose is in front of the thorn. It just depends how you look at it. Um, but uh, here you can see some more of the, the, uh, uh, the damage. Now, here's the thing. This is, this is a tip. When I put this on here, what I did is I put the whole, the whole uh, uh, panel on here, and then I cut it from behind. But I didn't really cut it. Let's see. What I did, oh, there's my, uh, my, my lawn uh, mower brigade. More, more of the cleanup that I had to do. To get it to get it fixed up see how nasty it is and stuff and the roof is really pretty bad too but um but anyway oh james taking a taking a pool shower sorry guys but here's the thing when i when i put this next piece of of paneling on there what i did and i don't know if you can see it right here but i'll show you a close-up i drilled a hole right there and a hole at the bottom and a hole in the center what i did is i went behind oops I went behind the 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 paneling, and you know when I drilled those holes, what I what I did, I wonder why it's what I did is I drilled the holes where I'm going to make the cuts, and then I turned around. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I was using the, the wrong thing. What I what I ended up doing is when I had the holes drilled, I knew where the where the end of the stud was. I went ahead and, and drew a line, as you can see right there, and then I took my saw and cut it. And and it actually cuts pretty good like that. I have to go back and clean it up a little. Now, is that con that's not concrete board siding, is it? No, no, it's not. This is a uh, um, OS 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 T one eleven. Yeah, T one eleven. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's pressed wood. 
supposed yeah, okay. to be stronger. I wonder how it's going to, but it's siding. You know, that's the only thing. No, that- it, as long as you maintain it and keep it painted, it will last great, and uh, it works very well. <laughs> Well, the problem is if you don't, but it's the same thing with any siding. If you don't keep it maintained, it's yeah. going to go to hell. Yeah, and the problem here is that there's no uh, eaves, so the water actually runs down the wall instead of, you know, falling off the roof, basically, if that makes sense. Right. But anyway, that's my tip, drilling those holes. And that's then, good... then you, you draw a line, and that's, that's where you cut. Yep, so, anyway. very good. That's that's all I got, guys. Very good, Jim. Do you have any? Oh yeah, I got a couple of. I got a bunch of them here, but the ones that are kind of the coolest. They're, if you uh, have a uh, drill press and you want to put a dust collection on it, a good way to do that is to get a four inch down to like whatever hose size you got for your vacuum cleaner or whatever, or your shop vac and then drill a hole in the bottom of the four inch side of it and put one of those big disc magnets at Harbor Freight cells that's got the hole in the middle of it and a hook on it. And then you can just set the thing on the top of your uh, drill press table and it'll suck the, the dust and all the chips and stuff right out of the, whatever you're drilling. That Ooh, one works pretty good. Packing it off and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one works really good. And then you can put the thing wherever you want. And uh, what's another good one here? Oh, this is, this is a good one. So if you ever want to, you know, you've got those dowel rod jigs that you can line dowel rods up and put two boards together and keep Paul's them. Paul's got a really but nice one. Yeah, but if you've, got, if you've got a situation where you've got, like you want to put, a four by four together or something that's bigger than that typical dowel jig and you don't have those little uh centering pins that you can buy where you drill a hole and stick the centering thing in it and then you can push it down on the wood and cause a divot in it so you can see where to drill the other hole just take a little like a nail with a really small head on it and then kind of tape it down so that the nail head is laying on the spot where you want the hole to be and then just put the wood together and you know like smash it down and it'll oh, put it oh yeah that's a good totally. idea yeah, yeah so you got a mark on both sides of the wood that yeah way. and yeah. Then, yeah then you get a mark on both sides and i was gonna everybody knows about the salt you know you put salt on two uh pieces to glue and you glue yeah, the, glue, yeah. Yep. the oh. other thing you can do is is put a couple of pin nails or something in the wood that's usually what i and, do yeah and then just clip the heads off of them so they're barely sticking up and that'll that'll kind of grab them and yep plus when you put the salt thing. and the glue it tastes better too <laughs> it does absolutely <laughs> right yeah that works real well you just sprinkle a little bit and they will not slide right nope. nope and you don't want to overdo it. it it doesn't hurt the glue and the reason i say that is because we had the tight bond guy at our woodworking class or uh, woodworking um club club thank you <laughs> uh, and um he we were talking about that and he said yes as long as you don't overdo it it will not affect the uh tight bond right. in other words you don't want to pour the whole big thing of salt on. yeah that's salt abuse yep is that it <laughs> leonard davis oh, yeah i got yeah that'd no, be that's it. I, yeah we're gonna keep to like two or three uh uh for each person so uh uh dixon do you have anything Yes, uh, let me. I gotta cross off the salt one because Jim <laughs> stole that one and he stole the different one. What was? Oh, the nail. That's the reason I said you might want to yeah. get quite a few because we could be overlapping. Like yeah. Brenda, Brenda stole my hacksaw one. Yeah, that nail trick. I knew that one with a piece of tape. That's a good one. Another yes. another real uh, good tip. Some people forget every time you're building a box or anything, make carving a sign. What you do is you instead of measuring each individual part, depending anything you make, overextend it and then cut it off. It's a lot easier to cut it all off, make a line and cut it off rather than mark every, you know, like if you're making a box four feet long, instead of marking every board and trying to line them up, always extend everything an inch or a half inch longer and then just cut them all off. Right. I had a woodworking teacher in high school said, always leave the line on the piece you're saving 
Yes. Because yeah. you, yes. you can whittle expanded. down to the line, you can't add wood to it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're right. And then if you got all these little clamps and these these little metal clamps and stuff, a lot of times you go to Walmart, you can buy a bag of these rubber bands, these wide rubber bands. And what you do is you put that around your clamp. So now if you're holding strip on the end of a table, you got that rubber band on there so you can clamp oh, it yeah. on mm -hmm. and it holds it on. Right. Uh, yeah, the other tip, let's see. You just cost Rockler a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The simple rubber bands. Uh, oh, little Walmart trick. will be sponsoring us. Another one is you, you, you take two holes, like a quarter inch drill and you drill two holes you you glue a dowel in it and then you find the center point between them two and you drive a wood screw on the back side well now you have a gadget where you can make a line on any two by four center you just turn it and yes. it'll make that center line because you got a wood screw just sticking out on the other side and you have the two dowels that hit the side of the two by four so you just twist it and go like this and now you got a center line mark on any size board that's a very uh, good idea. Yes. Yeah. The other one, other one was, I don't know if, if you take a triangle and make four triangles, like this piece of paper and you drill equal distant holes around that triangle, the holes and the triangles have to be big enough. So a clamp goes inside of there. And if you make four of these triangles with the three holes, you'll be able to clamp any box at 90 degrees or any T or anything you're building because the clamps will go through this hole down to the table, or you can take the same, the same triangle, you take a clamp and go from here to the next piece of wood. Yes. So if you have three of them, 90s, you can build anything and you can sneak a clamp behind it and you don't have to buy all these fancy jigs that got 90 degrees with clamps and all that. Them three triangles will do the same thing. That is a good idea. Why don't you 3D print them? <laughs> yeah, you could do that too, because I, I did some <laughs> big triangles for uh what are them safety things so you don't cut your hands on the table saws. Oh yeah. P pushers. Push Push yeah. yeah. And I could three I three D printed three big ones and I could do the same thing and then make equal distance holds on there and make them wider. And now you got Yeah, I was uh, thinking about it. as soon as you said that, I was saying like you got a damn three D printer, why don't you print them? Yeah, <laughs> could do that too. It'd probably be quicker to cut them out. <laughs> yeah, probably would. Uh, before we uh, go to Chris, minutes. I just want to say, yeah. lady friends, you forgot, Chris, you forgot Chris. I know I haven't forgotten. Yeah. I said before. I heard, <laughs> Chris. I heard him. I heard him. Yeah, I so said before we go to Chris, I just want to make a uh, lady friends. Wicked truth is um, over on Twitch, uh, and I just I hope they're still there. And we are watching and monitoring Twitch. First off, she said, "What's up?" And then she says. Paul, she loved your medicine bottle idea. She thought that was fantastic. So that's <laughs> lady friends, wicked truth. That's all Jeez, one word. Dude. When a girl has no name on YouTube. The girl has no name on YouTube. They're friends of yours from Twitch, aren't they, Al? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's the same one? She's that's the same, same person? Yes. Okay. Well, we were watching you. We were. I was monitoring the Twitch, but uh, we glad you joined us here on YouTube when a girl has no friends. name. She said, hi, killer. Is she talking to me? I know she's talking oh, to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, when a girl has no name. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I was making a wall or banger box out of reclaimed woods from a soffit and fascia boards replacement all around the house here. I sent all my plans to Kilroy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was sitting there looking at it on my discord server. She posted them all and, uh, I can't wait to see the final product. Yeah. She uses, uh, um, uh, uh, anyway, a program to, to draw them out and stuff. And, and that's how she was. And Dave Hart's still over there on Twitch also. And he said, there's three people over there on Twitch watching. So Dave, thank you for being over there on Twitch. And we are Dave monitoring it. If you, anytime you're over on Twitch, all you have to do is type in and we will see your comment. It was kind of busy tonight uh, with Richard and everything in the beginning. So I wasn't able to go back through the chat as much as I normally do. And I, uh, go, Russ. but uh, yeah, so uh, all right, Chris, you're up. Okay, these are pretty simple things, but when I was in school, we made these things for the kids at Children's Hospital and Mass Hospital School. Kids are mobility um, challenged, and I tell you, I made one for myself. And if you're reaching up above your head and grabbing things, show us that. <laughs> 
little bit now. How is this hand go on the end of it? It's like a giant pair of scissors. Sometimes you have to do it with two hands, but if it's a yep. small item, you can just do it one-handed and grab them. That I'm is. Gonna a, I'm going to put a piece of rubber in there so it gets a better grip. Right. Can you hold a beer with it? Um, I wouldn't risk a beer, no. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, we, we made millions of dollars when I was in school for the local hospitals. Yeah, that's a great idea because yeah, I made like 20 bucks for one of those grabber things. Yeah, I could have yeah. just made yeah. one of them. <laughs> yeah. This is just what I throw around the shop half the time I don't know where it is. And the other thing I do is a very simple thing. A lot of people have mobility issues. Bending over as we get older is harder and harder. You drop that screw, you drop that drill bit, a magnet on a string. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> I keep this right to the, on the side of my table saw because that's the central spot. And I use it probably at least twice a day. So, and what else was it? Oh, the other thing is simple thing. The bottom of my water bottles, the paint, mixing paints. Oh, oh that's idea. a good idea. Yes. Yeah. I got more containers around here that are like this, stained with paint. And I said, why am I wasting good Tupperware and stuff, you know? Right, right. So, the no, I never bottom, thought about that. Cut the bottom off. Now, how would you use a razor knife to cut it? Yeah, just a razor knife or uh, a box cutter, slice all around. and That is careful. a fantastic idea. I've got to try that. It's simple. It's time-saving. It's money-saving. Yeah. I did it for, for a little bit. I used to take the lids off the can of uh, spray paint and flip them yeah. over and put the paint in there. But then you end up messing up that and it won't go back on the spray can, paint can. So now well, you have no ideas what color is in that can. <laughs> I, speaking of that, you know, you buy paint and you don't always know what the color is later on. The label gets worn, gets yep. paint stains on it. I paint the cover. And then I put it back on. So I know what color that paint is. Just that's make sure idea. you put it on the right one, that's all. Because <laughs> that I have put it on the wrong one. So <laughs> well, that's all I got. Simple things make your life oh, a little easier nice. in the shop. That's uh the, on your magnet thing. Uh uh I what's I did in my shop for that same thing is I took a uh wooden dowel, three eighths inch wooden dowel, yep. and glued a hard earth um magnet to the end of it. And that's what I use to reach over and pick up the screws and stuff. Because this fat boy, <laughs> it don't, it's not easy bending over anymore to pick something up. <laughs> yeah. This thing came about when I was working on the stairwell in this old house. And I had my five-in-one scraping tool. I love that tool. It's my favorite tool. And I dropped it, and it went down the crack between the wall and the staircase. Oh. In order to tearing the wall apart, I wasn't getting it back. But I found this, and I just fished it down there, and it, I heard it goes, clink, like, oh, shit, I got it. <laughs> I brought it back up, and I got it back. <laughs> That's I lost idea. my telescopic yeah. magnet at work, and I missed that set thing so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, a rare, it's not hard, or, rare earth. Yeah, rare but earth. I just take yeah, yeah. a, a, a dowel, probably about two, uh, two foot, 26, I think it was 26 inches, because I had it left over from a project, and just... Uh, glued a rare earth magnet to the end of it. And that's what I keep in the shop. Just reach down. And pick yeah, I keep one of those expanding magnets. Yeah, they, I've, yeah. Got, I've got those too, but uh, I mean, it's like all... every time, every no. time I went, yeah, there you go. <laughs> screw I, finder. I got tired of using this for you know, a screw. So yeah, screw, I, screw finder. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean those little telescoping ones, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My workbench is a giant four by eight foot metal workbench, and it's all mag. It's ma giant magnets, so I I never lose anything. But I got a hard time throwing something away. I just wants to suck right to the table. All right, I've got a couple uh, of uh, uh, shop tips, just real quick. Like one of them is not a shop tip. One of them is actually a product that I bought, and uh, I've been doing a, a remodeling the bathroom. I've been using uh, quite a bit of plywood and even uh, and, and stuff. And I bought this thing uh, two or three years ago. And let me tell you, it makes all the difference in the world uh, in handling sheet goods, especially at my age, uh, to grab a hold of it. And it's called the gripper. Mm -hmm. Them are nice. Yes. Yeah. I, and I bought this like three years ago and I use it all. You can use it for drywall. You can yeah. use it for plywood, uh, any sheet goods. And it works absolutely yeah. fantastic. You put that on there and you can pull it like this and, and take the plywood or whatever and move it wherever you want to. It's just fantastic. So this is not really a, a shop tip, 
But I will tell you, if you have to deal with a lot of sheet goods, uh, this thing is worth its weight in gold. That'll save you, your back. Yes. Can you put I that on the it. bottom of the, yep. of the sheet goods too and lift up? You yep. can, but yeah, I usually I just put it on the top. Right. And, and just I can put it like this and I can just walk right with it anywhere I want to go. And it gives you better control. Yeah. Uh, you can act like if you're going to go around a corner or whatever, you just tw twist your wrist and it'll. Right. You know, I've moved three quarter inch plywood with this thing without any problem whatsoever. Now it's heavy. Don't get me wrong. But some people but, might not know that pinch is closed. Right. Yes. It, it, yeah. Yes. See, some people yes. don't know this that pinches, it pinches it. As you as you lift, lift. up on this. Uh, let's see if I got something in here. Yep, that'll save your back. Yeah. I've got some of those ones that go on the bottom of the sheet of plywood, but the trouble yes. with those is if you get off center, yeah. it's terrible to control where that yeah. thing locks on. And it's yeah, as you lift up with this, this back piece closes in and grabs on. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really lift neat. Up. And yep. so it will vary from anywhere to. Uh, from I think it's one uh, inch, one inch, maybe a little bit wider than one inch, all the way up. I mean, down to like eight. I've lifted eighth inch plywood with this thing. So, but I and three wow. quarter inch. Like I said, the three quarter inch is heavy. Don't get me wrong, but it's much easier for me to control that three quarter inch piece of plywood with this than anything else. So I really, really love. And it's only I think you can find it for between twenty and thirty dollars, depend on where you're. Where you buy it from i bought this one uh several years ago and i think i paid like 25 26 bucks for it wow and it's called the gripper yes it's called the gr gorilla actually this one's called the gorilla gripper yeah i think the gripper is the one that you use on the saws to yeah that was the yeah. push block yeah. yeah this is the gorilla gripper well it works fantastic it's got little instructions on there on the top on how to use it so all right so that wasn't really not a shop tip, but I do have a shop tip. Anytime you have any types of glue or epoxy and you're going to be storing them, uh, uh, you know, for a fairly, and I'm not saying if you're going to use it every day, you do this overnight, but if let's say that I'm going to use some epoxy and then I'm going to, it might be a week or two or three before I get back to it. If you want to really save it, I have found out if you put them in plastic baggies and squeeze as much air possible out of that bag, it will make this stuff this tube is about six months old and it's still good and i keep wow. it in this baggie so if it keeps the air from help you know from getting around to it but like i said you want to squeeze as much air out of it i also i don't use a lot of tight bond three uh wow. you know so i put my tight bond three and i use a lot of tight bond two but not a lot of tight bond three this bottle is a year old and still just as good as can be so but three, three to, is my go-to. Yeah. So the uh, you want to squeeze as much air out of the bag as you possibly can, uh, and it will help. Trust me. Like I said, this this bottle is over a year old, and it's still just as fine as it can be. So it helps. It just helps. I mean, it helps it helps a whole heck of a lot. Um, the other one. Oh, then the next one I had is anytime you got uh, uh, any kind of like. Um, I use it for, you can use it for quart paint cans. You can use it for anything. Basically, it's got a liquid. I use it for my PVC cement is store your containers upside down. Oh, yeah. 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 Store those containers upside down. It will make them last a whole heck of a lot longer. And that includes quart paint cans. Yeah. Make sure the lid's on there real good and turn them upside down. What that does is air, it helps keep air from getting inside the can because the, the liquid seals it. Now, you might still might get a little bit of a, a, a ring around the edge or whatever, but if you know yourself, if you store a paint can right side up for a long period of time, you open it, you got that film on top mm -hmm. where the paint's dried because the air got in there. But if you, you, you film that, huh? You don't get any film on that top side then? No. no. You bite around the edge on a paint can. Sometimes when I open it up, when you pull the lid off, there'll be like a string ring that's went yeah. around it where the air got to that little bit, but not the whole top of the can like it would normally. It'll probably keep the can from rusting too. Yes, yes. So well, it, it, also, it, it also keeps the pigment closer to you. So when you flip it over, the pigment's right there. Right there. It's not on the bottom. Up. Yes, it does that yeah. too. But anything, I use it for quart paint cans. I use it for PVC cement. Yeah. I use it for all, all kind of stuff. I keep them upside down and that makes them last so much longer. This is a pipe thread sealant. 
So, but just keep them stored upside down. So th those are my three right there. So, oh. but the plastic bag really does work. Like I said, that, yeah. it, it keeps that works it real good on paint brushes too. You can keep a, yes. a paint brush for four days yes. if, instead of buying new ones. If you and put if, it in a and bag. here's another thing, not only put it in the bag, but stick it in the refrigerator. Yep. 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 Now your wife will raise hell because everything inside it tastes like paint. <laughs> but, but if you stick it in a cold area, now I have a shop refrigerator. I do mine. But if I'm using especially oil-based paint, I will stick it inside of a bag and stick it inside the refrigerator and come back. And let's say that, at, let's say I put a coat on it that morning, but it's not dry until four or five o'clock that afternoon. <clears throat> come back out, take it out. It works perfect. So do you put the cover on then before you tip them upside down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So those are my three. And I appreciate everybody being here tonight. Thank you. So we didn't go over too bad. Nine, nine, wow. Not too bad. Not, not, not at all. Can I leave them with something, Russ? Yes. I don't know. Since, since, uh, th there oh, is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since, uh, um, you guys can see that, right? Yes. Yeah. Since uh, Richard was here, I thought I'd play this. Be quiet. I love it's this. a retail thing. And I get kickbacks. You know what? It's, a, it's Halloween. This is my Halloween. Still take the retail package out of here. Is that why my present got broken? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's anger issues. <laughs> Listen, I don't have anything against you, Santa. Okay, it's just that you can't be here right now. You have to wait until after. I was. He don't want Santa Claus around at Halloween. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's his date. There right. ought to be a law. I just, I just, and that's how we met. That was the first year we met. I think that was three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Does it have a date on that video? Um, it is October 17th, 2019. Yep. 19. Oh, so that was only a year ago? It was last yeah. year. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. I was thinking it's been three years. No. Wow. <laughs> my sense, slow there, Santa. my slow. sense of time perception has just gone to hell and back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I think I thought it's been like a couple of years. Wow. You got some pretty good hits in there you know <laughs> yeah well well it's his um manager but she told me knock the crap out of him so. <laughs> well that's what i did she goes i want to see realism in this hit him so. <laughs> uh, anyway. he's, a, he's a great guy i i i i mean a real great friend uh i appreciate him so very, very much uh i have asked he owns an appliance store rich line appliances in eagle lake florida and uh, as he sell appliance, he sells appliance parts. I should say, not appliance store, uh -huh. appliance parts. So he sells appliance parts, and I, and he's helped me out a couple of times. Uh, I had problems with my refrigerator, and uh, he actually looked up the part, and he goes, "You know what? You can order it directly and have it shipped to your house a lot, even cheaper than I can buy it through Amazon." So he gave me the number. I went on Amazon, bought it, and had the part shipped to my house and fixed my refrigerator. So. Really great guy, and I enjoy his friendship. Thank you, Richard. So, and I enjoy all y'all's friendship too. Thank you all very much <laughs> for being here. Yep, I appreciate it. So, yeah, we're uh, what? Where's the Leonard Davis wants to know where the Easter Bunny is? Oh, that's a good idea. We need to have an Easter Bunny come in there. Uh, Aussie Man says yes. You can use them on either side of the sheet. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. The griller, the yeah, you can use the it on the gripper. bottom if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, you could uh, use it on the bottom. Austin likes the way you look in a in a uh, dark suit or black suit. <laughs> Dave Hart says, "Is the plywood grabber right hand or can it be used left hand?" <laughs> <laughs> Dave, it will work with both hands. I assure you, <laughs> either left-handed or right-handed. So, yes, it will. So, uh, James says, good night, everyone, and have a great Sunday. Yeah, we're fixing Thanks, to cut out of here. Good night, James. We're fixing to cut out of here ourselves. So, uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you all all for being out there. Some of you all over on Twitch, I appreciate it. Dave Hart and uh, uh, what was her name? Um, 
Lady Frenzy Wicked Truth. Lady Frenzy. <laughs> thank you for being. And then she came over here with a, when a girl has no name. So thank you for being here tonight. Uh, thank you all, Dave, um, Michelle Marcoux, uh, Aussie Man that normally is all out there, Leonard Davis. Uh, thank you all for being out there. I appreciate it so very much. Luanna Pierce. Um, Dave Hart. Dave Hart. Thank you all for being out there. I appreciate it. James Parker. Thank you all. Jimbo. You very, very much. Yeah, James Parker. Jim, he's Jimbo. Uh, but uh, thank you, uh, Brenda, Paul, Al, Jim, Dixon, and Chris for being on here tonight. We're going to call it uh, a night. And uh, thank you, Richard, for being on. I appreciate it. That was a last-minute thing. He I, About 3, 2.30, 3 o'clock, I posted on this, PM'd him and said, hey, if you ain't got anything to do tonight, uh, come on over. He first uh, said that uh, he, he was filthy and had, had had a couple of drinks. And I'm like, <laughs> come on over. It doesn't matter. So what do you mean last thing? Last and, minute. And, that was I, well and I know I know that Brenda enjoyed it. She got the hot flashes. Oh man. <laughs> Thank you for telling him to, to come as you are. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he did. That's what he did. All right, guys. There's only one thing we got left to do, and that is if you're too busy to get out in your shop and make some sawdust, you're just too darn busy. Just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust. All around me and everywhere, I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Remember, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. You tell them, Chris. You tell them. Tell them, yeah. And wear your mask. Yeah, yeah definitely wear your mask.